Next, I started to work on installing some voltmeters and switches on my electric box enclosure. Using the AutoCAD software, I created a template that displayed where the different components should be placed. I next centered the template and taped it in place. I next used a box cutter to cut out the shapes, but a Dremel would probably be an easier tool to use if you have one. Next I inserted the voltmeter that would display my 24 volt battery status. So that I could turn the voltmeter on and off, I needed to install a basic on off switch. I next prepared the wires that would connect to the switch by adding some connectors. I next temporarily wired the switch to the battery and voltmeter to perform a quick test. I next needed to drill out the hole for the switch. After the hole was drilled, I could insert the switch. Next, we will finally dive into the deep end of the circuitry for this project. Since it was very difficult to film and research and perform a lot of trial and error attempts for getting different features to work, I only took pictures of the completed steps. So what you're looking at now is a basic schematic slash diagram that I created to help those who are interested in learning how to hook up the different devices. This schematic that I created will be placed on my website under the diagrams and schematics section. The schematic I created should be straightforward, however, I know some may have little to no experience hooking up components from a schematic, so I have created a frequently asked questions section on my website where I place commonly asked questions and solutions. So the first thing I did was detach my solar panel frame from the primary frame. Next I removed all the other electronics like the motor controller out of the enclosure. Next, I placed the 24 volt inverter inside the enclosure. I then placed a solar charge controller and parallax board of education inside the box to get an idea where I wanted things positioned. I next used some screws and nuts to screw the inverter in place. I next screwed the solar charge controller in place. And next, the motor controller. I next installed two bus bars since I was installing a lot of devices that would be hooked up in parallel.
Here you can see I placed both bus bars right above each other. However, you have to be careful that no wires from either bus bar touches the other bus bar or you risk damaging your devices. So just ensure that your wires are properly secured and if possible space out the bus bars more. Next I screwed down the parallax board, however I end up moving this later. Next I connected my 24 volt battery lead to the bus bar. Here you can see one bus bar has the positive wire connected to it and the other has the negative wire connected to it. Next I connected my voltmeter to the bus bars. I next connected my inverter to the bus bars. Then I connected the motor controller to the bus bars. I next went ahead and reconnected my motors to the motor controller. I next turned on the voltmeter to make sure everything was working properly. I next configured my solar charge controller for the type of batteries I was using. I next hooked up the solar charge controller by connecting the two solar panels in series first and then screwed the leads into the solar panels port on the controller. I also wired the connection from the bus bars to the charge controller. I next secured my solid state relay in a solenoid in place, however I will be moving the solenoid to a different location later. I should also point out that the solenoid operates very similar to the solid state relay, however unlike the solid state relay that will allow 3 to 32 volts to energize it, the solenoid requires a mass of 36 volts. The reason I used the solenoid is because it could handle much more current than the solid state relay. And as I stated previously, my solid state relay was not able to handle the large current from the lawnmower, but the solenoid can handle it without any problems. Next I hooked up the lawnmower's double pole double throw switch that will allow the lawnmower to run or to allow the internal 36 volt battery to be charged. Refer to the schematic for the details. Next I installed a DC jack connector that would ease the process for charging the 24 volt battery with an AC battery charger. I used some solder to help secure the wires to the leads on the connector jack. I should also point out that only two leads on the connector were needed, however I went ahead and soldered wires to all three leads. Next I started to install the DC plug connector. I placed solder on the plug connector's leads as well. I next placed a massive amount of electric tape around the plug connector's leads to prevent any wires from disconnecting and to make the connector easier to handle. Here you can see where I have plugged the connector into the jack. Here you can get a glimpse of two custom made bus bars I made that are primarily used for the motor side of the circuit. Basically I just used a regular screw to make the bus bar which allows current to flow. Next I reattached the solar panel frame. I next replaced the original on off switch on the far left with a double pole double throw switch. 
Here you can get a better glimpse of where I repositioned the solenoid. Next I discovered a new place to put my Parallax Board of Education, however I will be replacing it in an enclosure later. Next I installed an on off switch in the middle that would turn my 24 volt inverter on and off. Next I drilled out two holes on the enclosure which would soon allow me to provide power to my cooling fans. Here you can see where I wired two wires to the screw terminals in order to send power to the attached fans. I should also point out that the reason why I implemented it this way is so that I could easily attach and detach the fans from the circuit since the fans will be installed on the lid of the enclosure. Next I started to install the fans which we will get to in the next video and which I also have actual video footage for. Hello guys and ladies that does conclude this video. Now I just want to take a break from editing video and say a couple of things before I end this particular video. If you find these videos interesting or helpful, a way that you can show me that is by liking a video or leaving comments below the particular video that you found interesting or helpful. Or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, or you can share with others that you think may find this particular video interesting. So any of those things or many more will actually show me that you guys appreciate all the time and effort that I'm putting into these videos and it also boosts my motivation to spend more effort and time with trying to make these more informative and trying to get them out on YouTube and on the web a lot quicker so with that said I will see you in the next video